You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 13th of September and I'm Roland from Milford. The US PPI index was released on Friday, increasing 0.7% month on month, exceeding expectations of 0.6% growth. This took annual growth to 8.3%, which is the largest annual increase since 12-month data was first calculated in November 2010. There are a few other interesting data points within this release, such as trade services increasing by 1.5% month on month, goods prices increasing 1%, food increasing 2.9%, and transporting and warehousing shooting up 2.8%. This data does suggest inflationary pressures are not yet easing. The uranium spot price has been surging in recent weeks on the back of the Sprott Uranium Trust quite aggressively buying millions of pounds of uranium in the spot market. Investors can buy units in the trust and Sprott then has to go buy pounds of uranium equivalent to this inflow. In the past three weeks alone, they've bought approximately 5% of annual production. They also announced they're increasing the size of the trust by another $1 billion. The spot price of uranium is up 31% over the past three weeks, which has seen many uranium miners rally quite aggressively. Paladin, for example, is up 80% in the past month alone. The RBA met last Tuesday and decided to stick to its original tapering timetable and will reduce asset purchases from $5 billion a week to $4 billion a week this month. This was a bit of a surprise to the market, who had expected the RBA to maintain the $5 billion a week of asset purchases given the Delta outbreak. However, the RBA noted that the outbreak is expected to delay but not derail the recovery and that we should be returning to growth late in the December quarter. Turning to equities, there was a lot of news flow in the payment space last week. PayPal announced the acquisition of a Japanese buy now pay later provider called Payday. This cost approximately 2.7 billion US dollars, and PayPal highlighted it would accelerate their Japanese presence. It's of course possible they'll export this technology into some of the markets they operate in. Amazon's intentions to enter the point of sale market were uncovered, as Amazon looked to provide a solution to retailers that will allow them to process online and offline transactions, whilst also providing data analytics around inventory and other business functions. Their intentions are to take on the industry giants such as Shopify and Square. Square fell 4% on the day this was leaked. Domestically, the much-anticipated Santos and oil search merger was officially announced, which will create a $21 billion company. As a reminder, oil search shareholders will receive 0.6275 Santos shares for every one share of oil search they own. Santos expects to unlock 90 million to 115 million per annum of synergies post the merger. Looking to the week ahead, the US has a few key data points coming out this week. The CPI data is released on Wednesday, with the market expecting a 0.4% month-on-month increase in prices, which is a slight deceleration on the 0.5% experience in July. Retail sales data will also be released on Friday, and the market expects retail sales to fall by negative 0.8% month-on-month, largely driven by a big reduction in automotive purchases. Ex-auto, Retail sales are expected to decline a smaller 0.1% month-on-month. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.